Okay, I'm going to start. First, I have a question for you. How many minutes are you willing to wait for an ambulance to arrive and take you to an emergency room? Five minutes, raise your hands. 10 minutes, raise your hands. 30 minutes, one hour. <laughs> um, what if somebody is calling for an ambulance to dump his or her trash right at the moment when you need an ambulance? What is your reaction? How can that be? So today I will talk about a program our county started to reduce EMS frequent users uh, and also how uh, Tableau helps with the operation. So the example I just gave is an anecdote I heard from my colleagues. So somebody called for an ambulance. He or she described the right symptom, chest pain, shortness of breath, right? So the ambulance arrives, paramedics came and checked down the patient and the patient condition seems to be all right. Okay, everything's fine, so the paramedics leaves. As the paramedics leave, the patient says, oh, by the way, can you dump the trash for me? Okay, so that was the example. And the first question I asked you guys, five minutes, 10 minutes, or 30 minutes, right? So it turns out every EMS, they actually have a standard for success. So the standard for success at our county emergency medical systems uh, services is to respond to, to respond to an ambulance call in less than 10 minutes for at least 90% of the calls. Okay. So first, a little bit about my team and me. I am, I'm Jing Yao. I am a human services data analyst at Johnson County, Kansas. Anybody here from Kansas? Raise your hand. Oh, yay. <laughs> um, so I work at the centralized IT department. And we are a big department. We have about 100 people. So my team is the county GIS team, uh, geographic information system. We handle county spatial data. So my colleagues have built a human services data warehouse. It automatically pulls client level data every night from these departments. These uh, developmental supports, emergency medical services, human services, mental health center, public health corrections, county jail, and we also have state parole data. Uh, I I am an analyst, so I handle data analysis requests from these departments. I build dashboards, reports, make maps, do statistical analysis, for example, program evaluation, and do some machine learning. I also provide support to the data analysts in those departments. Here is today's agenda. I will briefly introduce our county our emergency medical services and the program that reduce EMS frequent users. I will show two of the Tableau dashboards I built for the program. And my focus is how to make these two maps in Tableau. So spatial binning map and spider map. So Johnson County is located in the northeast of Kansas. Guess how many counties are there in Kansas? 50, 100, 200? There are 105 counties in Johnson, in Kansas. Okay, so Johnson County, uh, Johnson County population is 600,000. And the state of Kansas population is 3 million. So 20% of the pop Kansas population live in our county. So 
We are part of the Kansas City metro area, the blue area. This is the U.S. Census Bureau's definition of Kansas City urban area. And the red block is Johnson County. And you can see that there is an urban sprawl from northeast to southwest in our county. This is a map of population density. Red means high density, blue means low density. The dark black lines are the major highways. So again, you can see the population density is high in the northeast corner and low in the southwest corner. So in our county, emergency medical system, system Emergency Medical Services is a county department. I know in some other places it's their own like private uh, entity. In 2018, our EMS served 25,000 clients. Together they made 35,000 calls for ambulance. If you look at use frequency per client, most of clients called for ambulance five times or less in a year. If the definition of an EMS frequent user is somebody who called for ambulance six times or more in a year, then in 2018, there were 319 EMS frequent users. And together, they called 26,000 times ambulance. Here is one example of an EMS frequent user. This is a 55-year-old female. From 2015 January to 2019, she called many, many EMS non-urgent calls, made a few EMS urgent calls, and one EMS emergent calls. She also receives other county services. So accessibility service is the service for people with disability. Multi-service center at our county provide food pantry, utility assistance, and other things. Aging services, and she's also a client of our county mental health center. So most EMS frequent users have chronic medical conditions or mental health issues. Some have frequent non-injurious falls. Others have mobility issues or social isolation. How can we help them manage their chronic conditions so their conditions would not worsen or culminate into crisis situations that lead to EMS calls. How to reduce unnecessary EMS uses is a very common problem for many EMS in the country. In 2017 February, our county EMS medical director launched a program aimed to reduce EMS frequent users. Uh, they called it Community Outreach Referral Program, CORP. So this is a usual workflow for an ambulance call. Somebody calls for an ambulance, ambulance arrives, paramedics asset, assess and stabilize patient conditions, then determine if the patient needs to be transported to an ER. And yes, in most situations, the patient needs to be transported to an ER. Uh. So this program, the CORP program, encourages the first, first responders and the community members to refer the patients with needs to the program. The program has one mental health clinician and two community outreach nurses. They will call and visit the patients, connect the patients with available county and community services, and hopefully with the help 
of those county and community services, these patients will be able to manage their chronic conditions and may not need a call for ambulance as often. So one year into the program, the program, facility, the program staff asked us to produce some tables and graphs to facilitate their operation. They would like to see spatial and temporal dynamics in number of people being referred to the program. They also want to see some other characteristics of the patients. So based on their request, I made 19 tab Tableau dashboards. So this is how I did it. The data in the referral table are loaded immediately after the referral table is submi submitted. The outreach data are in our public health record management system. And those data are lo automatically loaded into the data warehouse every night. And when I build the da dashboard, uh, I connect to the micro, oh, and our data warehouse is a Microsoft SQL database. So when I'm in Tableau, I connect to the Microsoft SQL server. So this way, uh, the data in all those dashboards would get updated the moment the data in the source data table are updated. This is a online referral form one of my colleagues developed. So uh, when a first responder or a community member fill out this referral form, the form is really long, I just show you the top. Uh, so then once they fill out the form, when they hit the submit button, the data in this form will immediately go into a Microsoft SQL table. And in most of those cases, the first responder would make a referral right after they respond to a call. Uh, for example, after they took a patient to an emergency room. Oh, so I'm gonna show you, so I built 19 dashboards, but today I will only show two of those dashboards. So I'm gonna switch to Tableau. Okay, so when I made the dashboards, uh, I made them into a letter size, right? So I can print out a PDF. I know, it's not a very good way, but that's how they're gonna receive it. Um, so this dashboard shows number of patients being referred to the program in time and in space. So I have a time slider here, right? So they can pick whatever time range they want to see. And this line graph shows number of patients by month. And this is a spatial binning map. So number of patients are counted by these geographic squares. So each square is 0 0.01 degree latitude by 0 0.01 degree longitude. At our latitude, one square represents 0.7 mile east-west and 0.5 mile north-south. Uh, and number, the color of each square represents number of patients living in that square. So then this bar charts are actually uh, shows number of people each of these departments referred to the CORP program. So this one, the first one is our uh, EMS system. It covers the whole county. So you can see that uh, the squares are almost everywhere. And then we have 10 fire departments. So this one is Overland Park Fire Department. And this one is Shawnee Fire Department. 
right? So when they first started the program, the program staff actually went to each of these departments and talked to them about, hey, we have these programs. If you see a patient with the needs, if you see a patient may become a frequent user, uh, please refer them to us. So uh, the program staff want this information so they know how each of these departments was doing in terms of referring a uh, patient. So this dashboard shows for those people who were referred to the program. And most of those referral were made right after them got transported to the ER. So this one actually shows number of patients being transported to hospital ER right when they were referred to the program. Uh, this number, it should be bigger than this, okay. So, um, so you can see that this number is definitely smaller than this number, why? because not all ambulance calls resulted in a ER transport. Oh, and then a little fun information. Our EMS cannot charge a patient if they didn't take the patient to the ER. So if they went, got to the patient's house, stabilized the condition, then they go back to our county EMS, the patient wouldn't get billed. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is the line graph shows number of patients being re uh, transported to hospital by month. And here this is a spider map. So each line actually shows from origin to destination. So it's like a path from origin to a destination. So the origins here are those geographical square you see in the previous dashboards. And all the destinations are our local uh, hospital ERs. Most of them are in our county, a few of them are right outside our county. Um, the color of this line represents number of patients took that path, right? So if in that geographic square, there were nine patients, actually no, the most would be eight, Right, so let, let's say in that geographic square, eight patients got transported from this square to that same hospital ER. So then you get this darker color showing eight. So then this bar graph shows a uh, number of patients being transported to each of these hospital. Okay, so that's why it's called the spider map. Uh, so that is mostly, the, this hospital takes most of our patients. That one's the second. This one's over here. Oh, and I forgot to say, our patient has the choice to which ER they would like to be transported to. That's why you see some patients travel all the way from here to here. And so, the program staff and our uh, EMS medical director, they always wanted to go talk to these local hospitals and to tell them, hey, look, we started this program. We are reducing people being transported to your emergency room. We're saving you a lot of money, right? Can you guys share some cost uh, of this program with us? So that was, uh, when we first built this, that was the motivation of showing uh, which hospital the patients or how many patients goes into these hospitals. Where am I? Okay, so two years now, right? Two years down into the program, our county manager's office put a request uh, request us to do a program evaluation. They want to know if this program is effective in reducing uh, EMS frequent users. So I did a program evaluation and in two years, 
The program staff outreach to 286 patients, resulting in 235 fewer trips to ER during the 180 days after the patients were outreached. The most common ambulance fee for a patient is $484. So 484 times 235, that's $113 saving for patients. The minimum ER cost for a hospital is $2,000. So $2,000 times 235, that is $470,000 savings for those hospitals. Okay, so now I'm going to demo how to make those two maps. So the Tableau online communities are wonderful, right? So they have all these tutorials, help documents to help us making things, and they have detailed instructions. So these are the resources I used to make these two maps. So first, I'm going to talk about how to make a spatial binning map. So how, do I, how did I prepare data? So remember the referral data? We're in a uh, SQL table, right? And I want everything to be dynamic. That means whenever the data in the source table uh, get updated, the dashboard would get updated. So I made a SQL view from the SQL table. So this is the referral form. And here you get a home address, right? And from home address, you can get latitude and longitude. Uh, that process is called geocoding. Uh, since I'm in the GIS department, actually my colleagues did this for me. But actually a lot of EMS, all the EMS calls already have latitude and longitude automatically come with them. So you probably don't even, even need to do this. So what I did is I actually run up the latitude and longitude into 0 0.01 degrees, right? So everything that has 38.97 or close will get binned in this. So I called it bin lat and bin long. Remember my square is 0 0.01 degree latitude by 0 0.01 degree longitude. So that's how I did that 0 0.01 degrees. Right? And if you're doing this whole thing for the whole United States, 0 0.01 degree may be too fine. You might want to make it 0 0.1. And then for each bin, I assign a unique identifier. So I just made like latitudes, longitude, and make it N and W over here. So once you have this, then you are ready to make a spatial binning map. Okay, so I am going to go to Tableau. So this is the worksheet that I made. Okay, so now I am going to show you how to do it. It's really easy. So remember I made the bin lat. Hey, it's not going anywhere. Uh, what am I? Is it? Okay, we have the same questions. Uh, my tableau is not doing anything. So maybe... Wait, are you in PowerPoint? I want tableau. I think I'll just do the PowerPoint since I have the uh, screen capture out there. Sorry. It's all right. So if I can go back there. Yeah. But this is not. Okay, now I lost my PowerPoint. Now it's just all gone. So is it going down? Okay, so it's going down. Okay, so the Tableau lost connection. Uh, 
So I have the PowerPoint screenshot. So where am I? Okay. So here, I think somewhere down here, I have a bin lat and bin long. Oh, this is not good. So then when you actually, when you select bin lat, bin long, and you go to that show me, it will automatically give you a choice. It's a map, right? So, and then another thing that's important to remember is over here, the details. So you want the bin ID goes into the detail, uh, level of detail. So that way you will see however bins you have, you will see however many uh, shapes. And also make sure that uh, the mark here is shape. And then once you got shape, you choose a square, right? The solid square. And another key thing, like a cheating thing, is you want to adjust the size of the square into like, so you can see on your dashboard, not on your worksheet. On your dashboard that you see your squares are almost close to each other, but hasn't touching each other. So then your reader know, oh, we're talking about things in these squares. Okay, so over here, right? So if you look at the worksheet, so the each square is a little bit smaller, but when the, by the time you guys go to the dashboard, then the square actually was the right size. Okay, so the next one is the spider map. So when I first made the spider map, I made it in Tableau 2019.1. And for that one, preparing a data table is a little bit complicated. Um, but then later on comes 2019.2. And in 2000.9, 2019.2, actually there are these two functions and because of these two functions now making a spider map is really really easy so this is again how do you make the table so i created a view from a table and these are the bin lat and bin long and bin id you already see for the previous map and what i did is i actually joined to another table called hospital so I have the hospital name and hospital latitude and longitude. Okay, so you have destination, latitude, longitude, destination, that bin ID, and then you have your destination, unique identifier, and then latitude and longitude. And then you have these two magic functions. Okay, so what, I probably don't have a, yeah. So when you are at a worksheet, what you need to do is first to create three calculated fields, three. So first one would be incident location. So that's a point. So you use the uh, function called the make point, kind of similar to this. And then I made it like bin lat comma bin long, right? And so that's the first point. And then the second calculate field is hospital location. I called it hospital location. That, and then I will be saying hospital location equals to make point hospital lat, hospital long. And then now I have two points, origin and destination. Once I have those two points made, the third calculated field is called incident to hospital, that's what I named. So this time I use make line. So make line from the origin point to the destination point. So here, ah, oh, I can't demo. Um, it's not gonna do anything. So what I did over here actually was I made the two, F, F, Actually, first I made the one map, right? So I select, I select that make line. So that was incident to hospital, somewhere here. And once I select that, calculate the field, you go to show me, it will show you, oh, now you can make a map. So I click on that one. So when I click on that one, it automatically gave me the spider map, but without colors, without those things that, that I want, right? So then, over here, I said, OK, I want to color each line with number of records going from this bin to that hospital. So over here, I put, you can't even see that. So I put number of records on color. I put the bin ID on detail. And then I get to this one. 
And this is actually I made a copy of this line graph over here. And over here, the key is I change the line graph to shape. Okay, so now you have points. And making sure here for the points, the level of detail is hospital. So now, otherwise you get all the bins and all the hospitals, right? So I only want hospital. And then I picked the shape that's across, adjust the size, adjust the color, so make them. And then once you have these side by side, now you want to overlay this two map on top of each other. So the key is if you select here, down here, you will see a choice that says dual axis. So once you do that, over there, that's how you made the map. OK, so wrap up. I'm done. Am I on time? OK. Uh, so I introduced our county. I introduced our EMS. Talked a little bit about the program to reduce EMS frequent user. I showed you how to make spatial bin map, spider map. Done. Thank you. <laughs>